Hello, my name is Gustavo Montemayor, and I'll be this is a presentation for Ms. Rokmani Kupuswami, Biology 1408 at Laredo Community College. My presentation is on algae and its fiber is an alternative to fossil fuels. We already know it can be produced as a biofuel, but how viable is it to be used nationwide as most of us would hope or would like to have it be used to help the environment. Now first we must know what is algae. Most of us think as algae being uh, a plant that grows in water, uh, but in reality, algae is not a plant because it doesn't have root-like structures that go into the ground, which defines a plant. Uh, it it does grow in water, but not just in water. So in, in not just salt water, but also fresh water. And algae is also found in some foods you eat, or you may have eaten. If you eat sushi, you may have found the if you were not aware of that before, the black wrapping in your sushi. Sometimes kind of black, greenish, like a, that's algae, that's algae, and it has a, if you smell it or when you taste it, it has like a salt water or marine taste, a fishy smell, that's algae, so that's algae, so you're eating algae, so algae is all, you know, good, for, you know, you can eat it, it's good, and it's the basis of many food chains in the ocean and freshwater, so well, there's algae, there's fish, and there's other life forms that, re you know, require algae to survive and live. Because you know, underwater. So it's important. Algae is very important, just in that. Now, currently, according to scientific research, algae is responsible for producing more than 70% of the Earth's oxygen. That's very significant. 70% of the air you breathe is produced by algae, according to scientists. Some believe it's up to 80%. Now, oxygen is important, required for our life. To live, you know, many organisms require oxygen. Tree, you know, oxygen and water, basis of, you know, survivability of many organisms on Earth, and it also helps reduce, you know, remove large amounts of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Now, carbon dioxide is obviously the pollution, the end product of burning like fossil fuels, gasoline, the air you breathe, you know, release carbon dioxide. Uh, algae helps remove it, keeping the air clean. And now it has also been able to generate biofuel. Very, you know, very important. Algae has many significant uses to the, you know, sustainability of life on Earth. So we keep going into algae. Now, other alternative sources of energy that are currently out there that I'm sure many of you are aware of is wind energy, the wind farms, which, you know, sometimes power your house if you have renewable energy in your home that you choose to have it, you pay a little bit more. Like a cent or two more per kilowatt, and you have renewable energy usually coming from wind farms. There's hydraulic, there's solar. Solar's been around for a long time. The solar panels, you're sure, I'm sure you're aware of. You know, there's currently now new technology. There's solar powered uh, washer and dryer, solar powered water heater, solar power air conditioning units, reduce, reducing your electric bill, and uh, helping the environment. There's corn, one that we came out a few years back. Uh, which produces ethanol, which most of us have used because most states require a certain percentage of your gasoline to have ethanol in it, up to 10% sometimes. And water, hydro has been around for uh, centuries, you know, water runs, it turn a water mill and, you know, produce some energy, we can transform it and use it for something else. And now algae. Now, the question, why algae? Why not tomatoes or why not, you know, grass or, you know, something else you can think of? Why not, you know, something else that grows? Well, because algae has a very high oil oil yield uh, compared to other sources of biofuel. And another thing with algae is that it reproduces very fast in comparison to, like, for example, corn, which produces ethanol, which takes a couple months or a few months to grow. Algae, within a matter of days, can be grown and begin to be processed to be transformed into biofuel. So it's much turnarounds very quick, which is good. Now, when you go over the impacts of algae as a biofuel, uh, the impacts of, you know, large-scale production of algae on the environment, which is Mommy, the point. First of all, algae is water. This is my son, so <laughs> just so you know, this is what it's like going to school online. Anyways, water, uh, algae is water-intensive. So it requires fresh water or water, whether it doesn't have to be clean water, but it requires water nonetheless. And we're consumers of water. We need water for our life and our sustainability and many other organisms require 
water, how much water are we willing to sacrifice to have a biofuel? I don't know. How much? You know, where's the limit? What's the balance? The impact on the ecosystem. When you throw an algae into an area autotrophically, which is grown naturally, how are you going to impact that, that life system that's there? The animals, you know, the human life there, the fish, the birds, the ducks, snakes, alligators, termites, uh, everything that goes, all the rodents, the species that live there, how's that growth going to affect it? And the waste accumulation of algae production downstream and affecting uh, water, wastewater treatment facilities. And another thing with algae is that pound for pound it produces less energy than you know regular gasoline for example gasoline produces if a car gives you 20 miles per gallon on gasoline on ethanol it's going to give you 17 for example 17 miles per gallon uh algae is the same thing give you about the same amount you know give you less than, than it's not as effect and it doesn't have it doesn't store the same amount of energy as regular gasoline now positive impacts algae can grow almost anywhere you know not just in, in out in seawater and it produces faster than the biofuels I mentioned earlier, so that would quick turnaround, which would help produce larger amounts of it. And it would help obviously the environment, reduce the carbon footprint and so on and so forth and make it cleaner, better earth or environment than, you know, the way we're headed. So it would be good for everybody for generations to come. Now, one of the major obstacles to production of algae on a large scale is the space required to grow it. The autotrophic method requires 24 square kilometers to produce 12 million gallons of biofuel. That's the natural method, the one that you know, just kind of let it grow on its own. Heterotrophic method, which would involve the you know, insertion of chemicals and so on to speed up the process, requires 6 square kilometers to produce the same amount, 12, gallons, 12 million gallons of biofuel. The good thing is that one kilogram of algae produces almost one kilogram of biofuel. That's good. So weight, weight for weight produces the same thing. So the thing is that the heterotrophic method requires much less space. It's very expensive. So would you want to pay at the pump that extra amount? I don't know. How much more would it be? But if, you know, if a gallon is running at $4 a gallon, $3.50, are you know, willing to pay $6 a gallon, $7 a gallon? Like they do in Europe, where they up, they pay up to ten dollars a gallon for fuel. So, you know, is it? And then you're gonna get less mileage, you know, per gallon. I don't know. Is it? Would you want to? I don't know. It's up to the consumer. And here it illustrates the amount of space required. Here's the state of New Mexico, and the square in green represents the autotrophic method. So it requires a little bit over half the state of New Mexico to grow the twelve million gallons a year. And the red square is the heterotrophic method, which requires much less space, but it's very expensive to produce. Now let's put that one billion into perspective. You're thinking, well, one billion is a lot, a lot of fuel. I could, I know, as I thought, man, one billion gallons of fuel, we could power the earth, power everybody, you know, for a whole year easily. You know, we'll be overflowing with algae, but apparently not. Just in the United States alone, fuel consumption is 142 billion gallons a year. That equals about 360 million gallons per day. So that means the 1 billion gallons of algae biofuel produced in a year would be burned in less than 3 days just here in the United States by being used in the United States. So that's very you know, that's that's pretty significant that we'll burn through one year productions of algae, you know, in 3 days of biofuel in 3 days in the United States alone, and it would account for much less than 1% of the current use of fuel in the United States. So, positive impact on the environment, when it's required, you know, you're going to use for less than 1% of the fuel consumption, not much. I mean, I think it has to be, and we'll go over that right now. So, I think it's, it seems like a lot, but it's not that much to what we use currently, or that was the figures as of 2006 by research done conducted. So I think algae is a is a viable biofuel, but not in large scale as you know we would like for it to be or hope for it to be to you know obviously help the environment. I think in conjunction with the other alternative sources of energy, such as wind, solar, uh, ethanol, natural gas, hydraulic, hydro, you know all these other clean energies, thinking in using them together 
you know, we can have a positive impact. But just alone, no. I think it's it's not viable. Just on its on itself, self standing, it's not not gonna happen. Unless they come up with some awesome which you would be surprised, amazing scientists out there come up with something really good to, you know, make it cost effective and efficient and be able to put it out there to the pumps and then you also have to go into can the engine take it and modify the engines if you can have a hundred percent algae. So those other things have to be looked at, other effects, you know. But as a whole, just on its own, I don't think so, based on the information. But I think it should continue to be studied, and hopefully over time, you know, as we would all like, hopefully, you know, it could replace fossil fuels. But that's still a ways down the road. But in conjunction, yes. So thank you very much. This is my presentation on algae as a biofuel. Thank you.